The end. <laughs> you want me to check the closet for monsters tonight? No? <laughs> okay. Good night, kiddos. for your real bedtime story, kiddos. If you get scared, just remember to close your eyes and tell yourself it's not real. This is Midnight Apocrypha. For tonight's taste of terror, we bring you the Meteor Man. And furthermore, if I may speak frankly, my dear Diane, the basic thing wrong with the woman is her nose. Let's cut it off. Russell Adams. Then there's the matter of her ears. Just look at them. Well? They are, they're too obvious. Just cut them off too. <laughs> no nose, no ears. <laughs> A fine art critic you turned out to be. Oh, is this thing art? <laughs> Russ Adams, I hate oh, you. Oh, <laughs> can't take it, eh? I think it's the best piece of sculpture I've ever done. Oh, egomaniac. <laughs> Will you go away? Not until I tell my wife how much I adore her. <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> now, how about oh. stopping the artistic endeavors for the night and romancing with the old man? Oh, any night. Oh, come on. Out on the veranda, there's a moon. Spoken as Professor Russell J. Adams, instructor of astronomy at our beloved State College. <laughs> I don't know a single scientific fact about this moon. It's a special satellite built entirely for romance. Oh, then it's a date. <laughs> After you, fair Diane. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Just thinking it's a good thing we haven't any neighbors or they'd think we were honeymooning. <laughs> Ten years in two more weeks. Oh, sweet. Why? For remembering. Oh. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Why decide? It's such a lovely night. Yes, you are very lovely with the moonlight in your hair. <laughs> oh. 325 days out of the year, moonlight is to me as just the reflected light of the sun. A light interesting only in that it may be analyzed as spectroscopically. But this 30 days of our vacation, Diane, oh, <laughs> what a magical change. It's a soft lover's moon hanging in the heavens only to brighten your loveliness. You're the sweetest man a woman ever knew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> And people wonder why I can't get excited by Leslie Howard. Howard? Who's he? Spoken like a true professor. He's a motion picture star, an absolute paragon of romance. Oh, <laughs> perhaps I shouldn't neglect my movie going so much. I mean, with such paragons to teach one. <laughs> you do all right. <laughs> Oh, Russell! What's the matter? <laughs> I saw the brightest shooting star. Is that all? Oh, the way you guess, I thought you saw the angel of death himself galloping over the meadows. There's another one! Oh, look, <laughs> Russell! <laughs> my dear, for 11 months out of the year, the heavens have my full and undivided attention. 
But during this blessed month, let the heavens fall. I can't be bothered. Oh, I never saw such bright shooting stars. Yes. <laughs> and another thing, my dear. As a wife of an accredited professor of astronomy, I think it no more fitting that you give the phenomenon you just observed its proper name. Namely, the fall of a meteor. There's another one. And another. Oh, Russ. How bright and beautiful! They travel at such a tremendous rate. The friction of our atmosphere burns them in a oh, fiery Russ, vapor. there's more of them. Look, one after the other. I've never seen so many shooting stars. Uh-uh. I mean, so many meteors in all my life. <laughs> Oh, so that's why you wanted me out here. <laughs> you knew about this, uh, meteor shower, didn't you? <laughs> oh, it's just one of the heaven's free spectacles in this constellation every three years. And this happens to be the third year. Watch the sector of the sky over there, just to the right of Sirius, and you'll see the major display. Every few minutes for about three hours... Oh, there! They're starting again! Oh, Russell, how beautiful! And how frightening! Why frightening, my dear? Those great masses of stone and iron coming from who knows where in interstellar space, traveling millions and millions of miles, and then going up in such glorious flame just as they reach the end of their journey. Not all goes to flame. Hundreds of them strike the earth every year. Oh, Russell, there's no danger. <laughs> no, no, no. The probability of being struck on the head by that cosmic rubbish is about a thousand times more remote than winning a sweepstakes. We found buying a ticket. Oh, Russ, that one. The brightest of all. It's not the brightest of all that reach us. Their very brightness signifies that the rush of air is cremating them. It's the dull, dark ones. The huge masses which finally reach us. That is to say, their mass is so great that our blanket of air has an opportunity to burn off only part of their bulk before their journey. Is over. Mass? Bulk? No, Russ. I'd like to think of them as great bright messengers from other worlds. Messengers of a glory beyond our sight. Messengers Wait, wait, of... wait, wait! Diane! What's that? I, I don't know. Something from the sky, it... Look up! Shooting star! Ah! Oh, all right, dear. Everything's all right. Russ? A, a meteor. It must have landed out in the field there. Uh, what? Here, let me help you out. How? Up. Are you all right, my dearest? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm all right. Russ, where are you going? Out there where it must have buried itself. Wait here. I'll be right back. No, no. I, I'm going with you. All right. Only if you want to. Oh, Diane, what an experience we had! The one chance in a million I spoke about almost occurred to us! But, but Russ, was it really a shooting star? I mean, that explosion, like a bombshell! A bombshell of the universe, my dear! Do you realize the mass of what fell was traveling 1800 miles a minute? It wasn't the impact as it struck the ground that made that tremendous sound. It was the displacement of the air as it rushed through space like a stroke of lightning! We heard the thunder of the universe! Oh, my heart's beating so quickly! Oh, Russ, what will we find out there? Oh, 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 a fragment of the meteorite, I hope! But it'll burn! No, 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 it, uh, all its heat will have dissipated. Then again, it may have shattered into thousand minute pieces. Oh, I pray to the heavens that it hasn't! Russ, I'm afraid. No, no. The danger's all over. Ah, here. The moonlight. So bright. If 
any of the mass landed, I should be able to find the torn ground where it's smashed for the turf. Please, Russ. Let's wait until morning. No, no, no. I must find the thing at once. The moon gives plenty of light. From the brightness of the flash, I'm positive the meteor landed somewhere right in here, I tell you. Uh, look! What? The turf! All turn up! This! This is the place! Russell, are you mad? Get up off the ground! Right here, it must have struck a glancing blow of the brow of the ridge, and... Uh, ah! I got it! What? A fragment of it! Ooh, still warm. See? No larger than a baseball. All that was left of it. That's... That's a meteor? A meteorite? All that's left of the meteor that burned and exploded. <laughs> what a find. Drop it, Russ. Throw it away. What are you talking about? Why should I throw it away? I'm afraid of it. <laughs> afraid of a piece of iron? See? That's all it is. Come on back to the house. I want to examine it closely. Oh, what experience this has been! Where did it come from, Russell? Who knows? The limits of the universe for all we know. Cosmic rubbish, rushing for space, burning in our air, and this. This little ball of metal, it's all that remains of it. Something that might have waited a ton in its beginning. Here we are. What... What are you going to do with it? Diane, what's the matter with you? Your face, it's, it's so white. I, I... I... I don't know. I... Somehow... I'm afraid. For all of us. Afraid? Oh, good heavens, my dear. There's nothing dangerous about this. A mass of metal that's 90% iron? What is as harmless as any inner piece of metal? Come into the study, I'll show you where the rush of air against the incandescent metal edge- Russ, wait! Huh? Someone's crying. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's Helga. <laughs> oh, Helga, you poor thing. We forgot all about you. Oh, oh, Mrs. Atom, it was exploding. <laughs> oh, now, now, everything's all right, Helga. What's going on, Diane? Poor Helga. The explosion frightened her out of her wits. <laughs> Off me, your Professor Adams, we die! We all die! Don't be a fool! The fire, it come from the sky! It kill us! It kill you, and me, and everybody! <laughs> we die! Everybody die! Fire from the sky! Oh, stop it, for heaven's sake! Stop that! Helga, please! Control yourself! Diane, explain it to her! Tell her it was just a meteorite, that's all! You understand, Helga? A meteorite! A shooting star! No, no, it will kill us from the sky! The sky, it kill us all! Oh, I give up. You take care of her, Diane. Give her a sedative or something. All right, Russell. All right now, Helga. Everything's all right. Don't be so frightened. I'm going to get at this meteorite, so please quiet the dumb fall down as quickly as you can. Superstitious idiot. <laughs> Simple phenomena and she thinks the world is ending. Happy little thing, aren't you? Well, at that I guess I shouldn't blame Helga too much. <laughs> Even the wise little Diane was frightened of you. Ah, but I'm not. You're nothing but a simple little meteorite. Iron, a bit of nickel content, nothing particularly unusual. Oh, Diane! Quiet her down? Yes. Uh, she'll be alright. Uh, you look pretty rocky yourself. Here, sit down. She's uh, very frightened. Huh. 
It's strange how the sight of a shooting star, as you call it, affects the layman. A sense of mingled fright and awe, and even reverence. I suppose the emotion dates back to primitive times when those streaks of fire were considered manifestations of a superpower. Why even you, Diane? Well? You've acted so strangely, as if this inert piece of cosmic metal had some supernatural ability. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do with it? Uh, nothing, just examine it. Here, I'll take some of this nitric acid. Oh, where's that bottle? Ah, here we are. Now watch closely, and I'll show you that the stone consists of ordinary elements. Iron and nickel. Russell? What? This. This mark on it. How strange. Huh. Yes. Funny I hadn't noticed it before. It circles the entire stone. Cuts in deeply. I wouldn't be surprised that a blow right here will break the stone in half. Yes. I think I'll try to do that. No, no, Russ. Leave it alone. Oh, good heavens, Diane. Are you still in that childish frame of mind? Why, you're acting no better than that fool made of yours. Nothing but a stone. All I'm going to do is try to break it along this fissure. Had a hammer in the drawer. Uh, yes, here it is. I doubt if the stone will break. It's almost solid metal, but I'll try. By George, it did. Clean it half. <laughs> What? Flesh? Russ, how? A nugget of gray plutoplasmic? No. It can't be. It can't. This is a meteor. It came from out there. There is no flesh. Nothing could live. Russ, look. Oh. It's growing. No. Growing, I tell you. Growing! Diane, stop! It can't be growing! I tell you, it can't! But it is! It is! Faster! And faster! Yes. Yes. I see it now. It is growing! I see it is! Faster and faster! Gray flesh reaching out! Oh, Russ! I'm afraid! I'm afraid! No, no, Diane, wait! Control yourself! This is something we got to see! Both of us! Calmly, so we can tell others clearly what we saw. Now pull yourself together, I beg you! I'll try! I'll try! Oh, Russ, keep your arm around me! Larger! Larger! Listen! The noise as it grows! I hear! I hear! Oh, Russ! When will it stop? When? Look! Look! No, no, I can't! That horrible gray flesh! But you must see it! But look! It's forming into something! Oh! A head? It's... it's forming into a head! Oh! Am I mad? Drunk? Insane? How can it be, Diane? Flesh in the meteor? Growing? Growing into a head? I see it! A head! A horrible head! And I see you, Earth things. It. <gasps> it spoke! No, madness in my head! No, you heard me speak, Earth thing. <gasps> you heard me speak. Diane, you heard? Yes! <gasps> But a head, a head without a body, speaking. You see what I will you to see. You, you hear and understand me? Thick <laughs> lips <laughs> laughing. I, I laugh at the fear and wonder in your simple little faces. Who are you? What are you? If I told you, would your little earth minds understand? Earth? Earth? Russ, what does that 
mean? What? Yes, tell us. Whatever you are, Mad Hellos Nations, tell us what you are. What you on Earth will soon have for masters. Oh, Ross! No, no, wait, Diane, I must know. You... thing. What can I call you? Tell me what you mean, you... masters. <laughs> Surely you, simple little men, do not think that in you... Creation has reached the ultimate. No, no, I can't stand it. Gray flesh talking? I'm out of here. You will stay. Uh, Ross, I... I can't move. Nor I... You cannot move. Who are you? Tell us, who are you? You saw how I came. A tiny bit of protoplasm in the meteorite. So I willed myself to be. To reach your Earth. You came here in that through... Through space? Through space? Beyond your furthest conception, Earth thing. Many of my people have tried. And I am the first to succeed. Then... The meteors are... They are... They are the means we have used to try and reach this haven of plenty. I am the first. Now there will be others. Oh, no! You... You are from another planet. An old world. Old beyond your understanding. A world grown cold in its age. Empty with passing years. We must escape to a young, fertile world. This world. But... But are you only heads? Heads without bodies! Oh, Ross! Ross, I'm... I'm so afraid! No, no, dearest, please. I must hear him speak. This that has happened to us is the greatest miracle of all time! Tell me, you, there. Are you only heads? In that world you speak heads. of? Heads. I told you. You see what I will you to see. But what are you? A mind and a will beyond your feeble understanding. As far above you as the apes that still must crawl in your jungles. But, but how can it be that you speak as I speak? Understand what I say! Your prattling wearies me. But I tell you this. All that you say, I know. The most profound thought any of you Earth things have ever thought is to me as the babbling of children. We of the place I came from are to you as you are to the crawling things of primeval slime. You are the children, forgotten ape things of our past. <laughs> and you wonder how I can understand you? Prattle the simple words in the form your simple mind can understand. But now, I am hungry. You understand that little thing? Hungry? Hungry with a hunger that has driven me over space without ending. Hunger that has brought me here. But... But what do you eat? You will know. What... What do you mean? Earthing. What food is there to tempt me? As it has so many of us. To go off into the coldness and darkness of eternal space in the mad hope of reaching this... this young and fecund Earth of yours. Oh, Russ! What does he mean? I... I don't know. What food could there be to fill the hunger of one such as I? The hunger that would make me entow myself in metal, flung into space, in the hope that chance would bring me through the fire of that air of yours. What food, Earth thing? I... I don't know. Tell me. The food that lies beneath that bony skull of you and yours. What? Oh, Ross! 
You understand me. The food that lies inside those skulls of yours. But what? But what food? Oh, no. Why, oh no, Earth Thing. You don't mean... I mean the thick, wet grayness of it. Full of all the essence that I need to fill the hunger in me. Russell, tell me, what is he talking about? What? What does he want to eat? He knows. But, but you can't mean... Brains! Oh, no! The thick, wet grayness in your skulls. Life to us. Not human brains. Human? You think you crawling worms are human to us? But, but if you're men... But we are not men. (laughs) You are the cattle and we are the keepers. You raise the cattle for life. And we, for centuries, have raised such as you on our world for life. But now, as I told you, our world has grown too old and too cold. The herds of you die and we grow hungry. That is why I am here. Because I am hungry. Oh no! Russ, hold me tight! Here, there are so many of you. And I and mine will fill ourselves on the good, great thickness of life. Mr. Professor Adams, are you... Oh, here you are. Helga, go away. Don't come in here, Helga! No, no, me, I'm all right now. I'm not scared no more. please, go! But I... Oh, you have a visitor. You you see it too, Helga? (laughs) Helga! You're laughing? <laughs> oh, I can't help it, V. I, I always get the giggles when I see a, a nice looking fellow. <laughs> nice looking? Russ, what can she mean? That horrible thing? She sees what I will her see. Come closer, Earth Thing. Yeah. No, no, Helga. Don't go near that thing. Closer. Helga. No, Helga, stand back! Stand back! Stand back! She hears only me. Don't you, Helga? Yeah. No, no! Stop her! Stop her! No, I I can't! I can't move! Stop, Helga! Come back here! No! Stop! No! No! Helga! Don't! Stop, Helga! Stop! Helga! No! Helga! Helga! No, 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 my dearest! Don't look! What that fake said he will do? It did! Oh, oh, Russ! Russ! Have we gone mad together? This can't be happening! I tell you! Earth woman. Russell! It spoke to me! We got to get out of here! Earth woman. No! No! Stop it! Don't look at me! Stop it! Come closer. No! No! Don't listen to him, Diane! No! No! Don't move, Diane! Stay where you are! Only me, Earth woman. No! No! Diane! Don't say that! Don't look at the monster! Diane! Diane! No! No, Diane! Stand still! And only I could move! Diane! Oh, Diane! Stop! Don't move! Don't take another step, Diane! Please, Diane! Stop! Stop, Diane! Don't! He wants to eat you, Diane! Stop! Stop! Why do you weep, Earth Thing? Monster! Fiend! 
Oh, my Diane! My darling! An empty hulk? Monster! I'll kill you! If only I could get you! If only I could move! You soon will move. To me. As they move. Being out of hell! How could you do it? How could you? They knew, Little Pain. And I have new strength. Buddy Mercy's name! Mercy? Mercy, the worm asks mercy of the bird. The bird asks mercy of the man. But human beings, my Diane! As worms are to you, you are to me. Come closer, Earth thing, and let me tell no. you. No! No! As worms to you, men are to us. Closer, Earth thing. I won't! Uh, no! No! You cannot help yourself no more than they did. I won't move! Uh, no! The worm eats slime and you eat flesh. And we who are the highest of creation eat the essence of it all. Gray brain cells full of strength and life. No, no, not me! Come you closer. won't get me! Closer. No, no, I won't move closer to you! Think I... And yet, I am... I... I... I cannot help myself. Closer. 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 Oh, Diane! Diane! How can I stop this monster? With the strength it gets from us, he'll go on. You heard him. He's the first. All of mankind will be like cattle to him. Mankind's brains to feel the horrors of that mouth. Diane! Diane! I got to find a way, the strength to stop this monster. Living doesn't matter, just to stop this thing from going out into the world. I got to find a way. Closer. The bottle, nitric acid, the bottle. Closer. I got to get the strength to close my hand on it. The bottle, the acid, I am. Diane! Dead! <laughs> Help me! I got to save the earth! The bottle! <laughs> got it! Closer. Closer, earth thing. Close to me! Close to you! Take this! <laughs> Diane, I killed the thing. I killed it. Outside, it's still dark, my love. Yes, and the sky still streaked with the rush of meteorites. And that thing said more of the monsters of his breed are trying to reach this earth. To feel that devil's hunger in them. <gasps> Another meteor I just fell. And in it, perhaps. <sighs> Diane. Diane. Is this truly to be the end for mankind? <laughs> 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 the Meteor Man was written by Arch Obler in 1937 for the radio series Lights Out. This production of The Meteor Man has been directed by Kirk Reichardt. 
Midnight Apocrypha is a podcast dedicated to the revival of retro radio dramas through new productions of series from the golden age of radio. Midnight Apocrypha is brought to you by Widener University's Lone Brick Theater Company in partnership with Forgotten Lore Theater. If you enjoyed our little fiction, you can find out more about Lone Brick Theater Company on Facebook and Instagram. And go now to subscribe, like, or follow Midnight Apocrypha. Or you never know what may find you.